It's Cam Dork. Hello, everyone. This is Cam Dork, and welcome to episode 32 of season 2 of my Buildcraft, where we play Minecraft with the mods Thermal Expansion, Buildcraft, and Forestry installed. Welcome back, guys. It's uh, The tree grove is going pretty nicely now. We're breeding some trees, as you see, a different type. Um, but that's not what we're going to do today. What we're going to do today is something that I actually have never done in this world, really, or um, or in the previous world. Um, and uh, as many of you know, my name is Chem Dork, of course. And the reason why that is is because I'm a dork, but I'm also a chemist. So um, one thing I haven't... Oh. Uh, zombie. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet in this world, or the last one, as I said, um, is brew some potions. So I figure now's the time to kind of start that. So I have this little basement chemistry lab here, uh, just kind of brewing some awkward potions. So uh, yeah, oh, I do have water bottles here. So we'll go ahead and, and brew up a few. Eh, whatever, we'll brew some up. Now, I've been kind of thinking about what I can do here. I can probably brew some potions. Um, just manually, but there's got to be a better way to do it, right? We've been doing everything kind of automated, so why not automate this? Seems like a reasonable thing we can do. And look at that, we got awkward potions, which is great. Wait, what's, what's, wait, did you hear something? I hear a, well, what the, oh! Well, now, I hope you guys enjoyed that little joke, but uh, onward to what we're doing today, which is going to be automating brewing. And you see here actually a prototype of what we're going to be building. Um, it is actually pulling out the finished potions of uh, making fire resistance potions in this case. It's now filling back up and uh, proceeding with, uh, with the automated brewing process, pulling in a nether wart, which you can see right, uh, right here. It's coming down, a single little piece of nether wart to turn these water bottles into awkward potions, and then we're going to turn them into um, uh, fire resistance three minute potions, and then finally the fire resistance eight minute potions here. So this is a, a prototype of one of what I hope to have as a, a few different potion brewing stations in my world, one specific for each potion type. Um, so you can automate using normal Minecraft, using hoppers and everything. I think Etho has done that and shown that. But uh, this is really using, I'm going to say, just about all buildcraft. There's a little bit of thermal expansion that I'll use to actually make these water bottles. But uh, for now, it's not automated. Um, but the filling is. The refilling of everything is. So I'm using <clears throat> brewing stands, gates, and filtered buffers. So we're going to go over a few in sequence. We'll start with the brewing stand. And actually, it's pretty important to know... Um, how the brewing stand behaves with buildcraft first. So we're going to do a little science here, guys, first. Science! We have to know how to work with these things before we actually work with them. So, um, uh, give me one minute, actually. So before we can do any automation with a brewing stand, we need to understand how uh, buildcraft can be used to integrate with a brewing stand. Now, buildcraft pipes and pipe gates can be used to talk to and uh, put items in and take items out, etc., uh, of the brewing stands. And I want to focus on the gates, and then actually, naturally, what will come out of that is how the pipes would focus into them. Now, brewing stands are very similar in, to a few other things in Minecraft, where, the, okay, they have inventories, right? It's a block with an inventory, but uh, in the case of brewing stands, they have four. One, two, three, four different types of inventories that take different types of things. So water bottles, awkward potions, etc. go down here. And, uh, you know, the things you use to brew uh, go up top. So similarly, actually, a very similar case is the furnace. And Buildcraft handles the furnace in a way which, uh, if I have these three pipes, as you see here, the bottom pipe only talks to this inventory. The top pipe, whoop, the top pipe should only talk to this one. And the side pipes, any, any side, uh, can talk to this. Very similar for the brewing stand. So these are basically can be talked to by the side and the bottom, and this inventory can only be talked to by the top. And I'll, if, I'll indicate this um, through the usage of these gates here. They're all set to turn on the green pipe signal when there's items in the inventory. Okay. So if there's a green signal and the gate turns on, it means it detects an item in the inventory. So if I put a nether wart here, only the top one turns on because that's the only one it can detect. If I put an awkward potion or something else, these bottom two turn on. Likewise, you can actually set this one to say, <clears throat> this one only detects, say, um, fire resistance. Um, yeah, let's just use the three-minute one. And, uh, whoop, weather. Clear that weather. 
And if I put an awkward potion in, this doesn't turn on, and this one does, because it can actually tell the type of potion that's in there. Uh, it can actually tell to the extent that um, the cool part is, is yeah, it can actually tell to the extent of if I have this set to blue signal and um, fire resistance three minutes up on top and eight minutes is up on, on down the bottom here. So green means it's a three minute potion, uh, blue means it's an eight minute potion. Notice how in the gate it's actually a little confusing. It shows them as both potion of fire resistance, but there is a difference. This one is, we put a three minute potion, this one we put an eight minute potion. So three minutes. If we put one in here, a three minute fire resistance potion, uh, that's the eight, this is the three, we get the green signal. Likewise, if I switch it to an eight minute potion, we get the blue signal. And it doesn't matter if I put it in this one, that one, or this one, you see how they're all turning on at the same time. Likewise, this one can turn on. Okay, so that, that makes sense. Uh, and as you might expect, if, um, <clears throat> if I go ahead and use a pipe to throw a potion into the side, it can it can add it. If I then try to throw something like a item used to brew that would only go on the top, it can't add it through the pipe in the side. It has to add it through the pipe in the top. Just like it is, I believe it still is the case, for furnaces. I haven't used these and automated these in quite a while, but I believe it's the same. All right, so that's, that's brewing stands in a nutshell. So we're gonna use these principles to automate our brewing stands. Cool. All right, on to the next segment, which is a filtered buffer. Okay, well, the next video segment isn't a filtered buffer, but it is certainly going to be about a filtered buffer, and basically what we can do with them and why it's useful for us in this situation. Now, what is a filtered buffer? First of all, you might remember that in the update video, I actually gave you a little snapshot of, uh, of what these guys do. I'll kind of go over it again. It's essentially, think of it kind of like a hopper that doesn't transfer items, or a chest that you can specifically decide what goes in and what does not go in um, by selecting what can go in. So it's actually a, it has nine inventories, and you can select what goes into each inventory. It's kind of like a selective hopper almost. Um, so you can say, oh, in these three inventory slots, you can put nether wart, uh, and in these two, you can put redstone, and that's it. That means you can't put redstone here, you can put it here, you can put it here, but you can't put it anywhere else. Uh, same thing with the nether wart, you can't put it where the redstone is, yada, 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 you can't put magma cream anywhere. So that means that when pipes connect to this, they won't be able to transfer, um, items other than the one specified. And likewise, you wouldn't be able to pull out anything that wasn't specified because it wouldn't be in here, right? Makes sense. Okay, so where is it useful? Um, as I'm sort of thinking about it, the filtered buffer seems like it is useful when you have a project where you want to have a local storage of items that uh, may be a little bit varied, but it is not your main storage of items. So literally, it's kind of a buffer of items that is a little local. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to use it for here. Now, we're going to have ingredients. Each brewing stand is going to have its own filtered buffer with ingredients set up kind of like this one. So this is set up as a fire resistance potion brewing station. So we need these three ingredients. But that's it. So we had a filtered buffer that that contains these. However, obviously nether wart's going to be in more than one location. And magma cream, we're not going to want all of our magma cream right into this filter buffer, so we just want to have this as kind of like a satellite storage location that is specific for this purpose of brewing. I hope that kind of makes sense. But that, that's where I see the filter buffer as being most useful. And in fact, I even have one here. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but it's a, uh, just filled with water bottles. It's just a way to get a little bit more water bottles here right where I need them, rather than having to have the water bottles travel a large distance to get where they need to go. It's kind of important here, um, although maybe not so important. All right, so what can we do th with the filtered buffers? Well, it may make sense, it actually does make sense, to use them with the Mzuli pipe, which you might also remember from the update video. Mzuli pipe is made to work with an Alt-Archic gate. In fact, I think it has to have one. So basically, what an Mzuli pipe is, is it's a combination between an emerald pipe and, uh, I guess, kind of like a Diazuli pipe. It can paint things, but it can also... It's a programmable emerald pipe. That's the best way to say. And it needs to be programmed by a gate. So uh, a gate will set these various types of extraction presets, red, green, yellow, and blue. And you can specify, for example, red means pull out nether wart. 
uh, yellow means pull out magma cream, something along those lines. And then here is where you'd specify what extraction preset, and say uh, let's let's give it a let's say red wire. So maybe if we said uh, if this gets a red signal, red pipe signal, do the red extraction preset, and then you'd also have to say do either single energy pulse or energy pulser. And you have to specify this at the same time. You cannot have one single signal specifying red and then later on uh, set, specifying the extraction preset and then have a second signal uh, later on specifying to just energy pulse. It has to be at the same time. So it makes sense that you have to have an AND gate, but you don't actually need to. It works just fine with an OR gate. Or does it? Well, that's where I kind of run into problems. So it seemed like it would be appropriate to set up this exact setup with my initial prototype here. Um, so it's the same type of deal. We have filtered buffer with the items we need. And then every, when I need a specific type of item, it sends a specific signal. So for green, it means set the green extraction preset and a single energy pulse. And this is how I have this diamond or alt arcic gate set up. Uh, for yellow, set the yellow extraction preset and a single energy pulse. Red, do the same thing. And that seemed like it would work. The problem is that it doesn't work. It works, but it doesn't quite work exactly like I want it to. I need it to pull out one and only one of each item. And in fact, what happens is it actually pulls out two. Uh, why that is, is not extremely clear to me, but it does do that. So this is a mock-up of what this is. It's just nether wart and magma cream. There's eight and 10. In fact, let's make them 10 and 10. Um, oops, I don't need that. Uh, let's see, yeah, that works. Uh, green is going to set a green extraction preset, which is nether wart, and blue is going to be the magma cream. So, oh crap, I don't remember. I think this sets green. Yeah, okay, so that's a uh, nether wart, right? So we had 10 in there. It looks like we might have pulled out more than one, and in fact we did, we pulled out two. If we do it again, now there are six. So as you see, it pulled out two again. A switch to the magma cream. It pulls out magma cream. It works just fine, but it pulled out two, not one. And now we do it again. Likewise, it pulled out two. So that's weird. That's with a diamond or gate. Interestingly, if you use an AND gate and just have the one extraction preset, uh, here we have to pull out blue. Um, it doesn't matter what it's pulling out. Oh, I didn't know what it how much was in there. Um, okay, there's 30 magma creams in there right now. And now when I set it, it's just 29. So this is working perfectly. This is a single energy pulse, and that means it pulls out one item, and it works great. The problem is that you can't set this, so it works great with the AND gates, but it does not work properly with the OR gates. And an AND gate will only allow you to specify one type of condition, because if I said Oh, okay, well then this uh, I set the same way, where I put green things here. Um, this won't work, because... Let's get the single energy pulse. Uh, because if we send the green signal, it's not specif... You have to satisfy, in order for an AND gate to function and do all of these, you have to satisfy all of these. That's how the AND gate works. So this setup wouldn't work, even though the AND gates work fine. I then tried the same thing with just a wooden pipe. Just single energy pulse with a green pipe signal. And this has 15 nether wart in here, and we'll see how many get pulled out. Let's do that. Single energy pulse. Okay, that seems to work. Okay, that seems to work. 15, 14, 13, 12. All right, so this works great. So that's, that's awesome. Likewise, the same type of deal here. This is, again, the single energy pulse works great. And it also works fine for the uh, single energy pulse with an emerald pipe, which is the kind of the key here. So 31 magma creams, if I do this, now there should be 30, and there are indeed. So this is actually how I had to work it, and that is why you see, oh, oh, notice, uh, at first it looked like there was two items coming out, and then it kind of glitched into one. It's kind of weird looking, but whatever. Uh, that is why I have this set up here, where individually it's just pulling out emerald pipe using emerald pipes to pull out specific items it works and that's kind of how i'm gonna have to do it i could have a fail safe in here where i waste items um i was thinking about doing that but i'm not gonna do go that route all right so that's basically how it's working um you can kind of figure it out from the combination of discussing about the filtered buffer and the brewing stand so we're going to talk to see what's in the brewing stand and based on that it sends a signal to do a few different things. So let's look at this gate right here. 
It's the most complicated gate, but it basically shows everything. This is an iron pipe, so this status uh, specifies how we um, make sure only three go in there and we don't waste water bottles. So if there's, there's space in the inventory for a water bottle, it positions the iron pipe to allow things to enter. And this is where the water bottles enter. And if the inventory is full, which means this is full, this has to it doesn't have to have anything in it, um, then it, uh, it switches the pipe to go back to the water bottle system. So that, that works really well. And then um, when there's a water bottle in there, it asks for a nether wart with that signal. When there's an awkward potion, it asks for a magma cream with that signal. When there's a potion of fire resistance three minutes, it asks for a redstone to get an eight minute potion. And then when the inventory is empty, it asks for a yellow signal, signals uh, more water bottles to come. Perfect. So that's kind of how it works, and we're going to go ahead and build it. We're going to be building four of these, I think, in the world. We're going to have uh, fire resistance, speed, health, and strength potions, because those are the only ones that make sense to automate. Not necessarily because I'll need them, but because it's an even number. And uh, maybe not the strength potions. We might even just do three. Um, but basically because it's a number where these potions, the ingredients aren't hard to come by, and I'll have a decent number of them. And because um, it would be silly to say, for example, uh, regener make potions of regeneration because I, I have like no gas tiers at all. Why would it, I, I don't have even like a stack of gas tiers and that would be ridiculous to get. So it's uh, not, doesn't make sense to automate that. Um, whether it makes sense to automate the others, uh, I'm not so sure, but maybe fire resistance, speed, and health. Um, maybe not the strength. We might just be putting three in the world, but they're going to look cool, and they're going to be awesome because I love automation. So let's go ahead and do it, and see you back in the world. Well, now that we know kind of how it works and about what we're going to be doing, where do we put it? Well, I'm thinking on the second floor here where my bed is makes kind of the most sense. This this room is quite large, and I got to find something to do with it. So there's the bed over here. I'm kind of thinking uh, of this. Uh, I might have to build the wall here and see, but it's it's worth it to split this room into two. And I think if I make a wall that maybe is, okay, maybe not going out so far. Give myself plenty of room. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, maybe here. That's good. And I need to have some room here, but maybe something along this line. Uh, it'll be like a service access somehow. But uh, on this side of this little wall, there will be all the potions. So all the potions that I have available, chest of each, that would be awesome. And then on the other side of the wall, I'll have available all the ingredients. So that means that my potion brewing area will essentially be this large area as you see here. I'm thinking of putting the automated brewing stations one, two, three right here, and then maybe making this area manual. So it's right next to my ingredients and it makes it very easy to, to do stuff. And a uh, nice expansive area, it's kind of cool. And I think that'll work. And then this space in the middle is going to be for the piping. That's going to be for something of a uh, sorting system of sorts, I guess. And uh, a system because I'll need to have a way of automatically asking for items to be sent to the automated places over there. So I'll go ahead and kind of set up this uh, a mock-up of what I think this is going to look like. And I'll be right back. And we'll kind of start dealing with that. We are back, and I have started to set up uh, the systems. At least we're going to have three of these brewing stands automated. I thought I'd uh, show you what I was doing with the third one. So we put a filtered buffer up there. It's a non-directional thing. Uh, stick an iron transport run, uh, pipe right underneath it, and a cobblestone pipe here. Now, it should be noted, I could lower these by one, but I'm doing it this way just in case I have to add a fail-safe. I can always put a void pipe here and, uh, well or somewhere else. I, I, I'm doing it this way. Don't worry about it. Just whatever. I'm doing it this way. Um, anyways, I'm sticking a, uh, a cobble... Whoa, I'm not sticking it there. Not there at all. I'm sticking it right here. Uh, this is for the wires to travel, because this is going to be where things are going to happen. All right, so anyway, uh, and then we go ahead and hook up the emerald pipes. One, two, three, and... Shoot them down with gold pipes right here, and then we just make sure that this is turned the right way. It actually was, but that's okay. Just to make a, and there it is. That's it. 
and then everything comes down here and then just goes over. Uh, what's in here, anyways? Oh, this is my nether wart. That's right. And I'm getting this from the nether wart farm. I just, uh, I'll, I'll move this chest somewhere else. And I'll actually probably set up a, uh, a system that will detect when this chest is full and turn off my nether wart farm. But for now, it's, I think it's on, actually. I might have actually turned it off. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so I'm, as you see, I'm actually setting in the system for the... Uh, I am going to have a filtered buffer for water bottles here. That's what this is going to be. And I'm setting up the lines for how that's going to happen. Now I'm going to be pumping it out here. It's going to go down and basically in there, there, and or there. It's going to call for the item, but what's actually going to happen is this iron gate is going to be controlled by a... Um, by a gate itself. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll set this as, I think this would just be a diamond ore gate, yeah. So these are just be diamond ore gates, um, and they will be sending signals, uh, yeah, that'll be, they'll be sending signals. They also, diamond ore gates, very importantly, is going to be here. All three there, and let's see. Now, for up top here, we're going to have an alt arctic Alt Arctic Iron and Alt Arctic Gold and an Alt Arctic Diamond. All right, so Diamond, so actually Iron Gold Diamond. Yeah, we'll set it up like this. So Iron Gold Diamond, Iron Gold Diamond. It's a good thing I have all these resources in the world. It's very nice. Uh, because I'm using a lot for this, but that's that's fine. And I'm gonna have red, uh, green, and blue, and then I will well not in that order. So that red goes to here, and we run it all the way down here, here to there. Blue goes runs basically up the same path, although into the front. And green is gonna go here. All right, and then yellow is going to actually go back here. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what? I am going to actually have another iron gate here. That's right. Just in case I want to expand this, and this is going to serve a purpose, you'll see in a second. And Because what's going to happen is I'm going to use a red pipe whoops, wire now, uh, which shouldn't interfere with the other red pipe wire, to send a signal all the way back down to here which is going to be a iron alt arctic gate and that will be the pump. So basically what's going to happen is when this has a red pipe signal on and the um, pipe is empty, I'm going to say it's a... Uh, uh, we'll do a single energy pulse. Actually we'll just do energy pulser. Okay, that's good. Yeah, energy pulser get this stupid thing out of the way, right? So this means that this will slowly dole out the water bottles as that's happening. And then, um, oh, we need a return line, of course, for our stuff here. And I think uh, I'll make sure I the water bottles are rushed along and they're just going to return back through, oh, no, no, not here. Actually, this is really not the right place. It should be here. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll do quartz, why not? Okay, get rid of that. All right. Quartz and whoop, 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 whoop. Don't want to connect, just in case. All right, no, I, st I said I didn't want to connect. Ugh. Okay, there you go. And then, um, yeah, there. And I will probably send this back to the main water bottle chest anyway. Uh, I think that'll work out fine. I'll have to think about that, but uh, this is basically the setup. Now we just have to program things in here so that it works appropriately. Um, which is easier said than done, I guess? But uh, no, no, it's actually not too bad. So I'm going to set up the wires first of all for these guys, and then we're going to start to program. Okay, see you in a second. Alrighty guys, I did a little bit of renovations and thinking, so our idea about using these gates is actually not going to work in terms of uh, bringing water bottles back and forth and whatnot, just uh, because it's too difficult to get into, but basically it's not going to work. And um, 
Really? This is actually a reason for using, I think I believe, this is a perfect case where I believe Diazuli pipes and, um, and the Mzuli pipe will be absolutely vital and awesome. So this is actually a great timed uh, uh, episode in terms of working on this right after our update, because the Diazuli and Mzuli pipes will work just perfectly for this. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to show you over here, I put in a system for making water bottles. Uh, it will actually, it's its being made by, uh, you know what, let me just show you the, the spaghetti. It's kind of all under here. Um, I managed to fit it all under here, which is pretty cool. So it's uh, its nice and uh, compact, as you see. It's, uh, oop, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the uh, bottom floor of my base, so I'm really close to it. But um, what we have here is difficult to get to, but basically, you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut into here. So we have all the workings we need to give ourselves some, um, Filled water bottles. So basically what we need is, in order to fill these water bottles, a fluid transposer needs to be provided with glass bottles and water. It's getting its water from the aqueous accumulator, that's easy. Glass bottles are being made by the cyclic assembler, which gets its glass from this furnace, which is um, uh, burning sand into glass, uh, yeah, uh, smelting sand into glass, and the sand is provided by this pulverizer, with pulverizing cobblestone. Uh, the gravel goes into this void pipe, and the cobblestone's provided by the igneous extruder. So one, two, three, four, five, six uh, machines here, all in this one nice tight space. Uh, cool, to provide me with this. And uh, I managed to squeeze in some power, and yeah, yeah. So this is all pretty cool. It's automatically going to fill up this chest. Uh, note, full is this. This is actually registered as full, but this is awesome and really a good thing because it gives us a little bit of a buffer. And the reason why we need a little bit of a buffer, and you may want to, you may want to say like, okay, Kendork, why do we have this return line? Why can't you just sort of spit the water bottles back, or even send them one at a time? Well, we need a buffer because, or why do, why do we have to send them back here? And in fact, this is actually wrong. I don't want to send them back here. As it turns out, where I want to send them is into this iron pipe. And oh yes, I programmed this iron pipe to really annoy me. Uh, here we go. Okay, basically if this filtered buffer contains less than 25% water bottles, it uh, sends a red pipe signal. The red pipe signal essentially tells this to send out a water bottle one at a time. Um, and then once it contains less than 25%, the pipe is in the up direction, so water bottles go up. Otherwise, if it's full, it goes in the west direction, which is backwards, and backwards gets it right back into here. So what this basically means is that uh, we can now take what we get from here, and I want to put it right back into that iron pipe. So this way I transfer it either back into the filtered buffer, or when that gets full, it just goes right back into this chest. So that's, that's the way we're going to do it. Um, the thing to note is that uh, I guess now's the time for the Diazuli pipes. Yeah, yeah I guess it is. All right, so let me uh, let me grab some Diazuli pipes because we're gonna make this system work. The reason why, again, I'm using the filtered buffer is because this kind of allows me a um, it literally a buffer. It uh, is it's like a buffer of items, and it's kind of cool. So I, I don't technically need it if I'm using the chest. Uh, so maybe that's a little wasteful. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that for a bit. Uh, that might, uh, that might actually be the way to go instead of just using a filtered buffer, since we're pretty close to the chest here anyway. Um, and since this actually gives me a lot of extra item space. The reason why I was using a filtered buffer before is because then I could, um, specify a, uh, like I have this amount of items that don't have to be taken out. Because essentially, as soon as I start taking a water bottle out, it gets filled back up. So I don't want to overfill this chest, and that's that's the key. Okay, so I'll be uh, I'll be right back. I will gather some items. I think we're just going to keep it this setup because this will work, and that's the most important thing, right? Uh, so I will gather some items and be right back, so we can finish off the um, uh, the sourcing of the Dizuli pipes. Unfortunately, I means uh, with my plan, I need to redo some of this pipe wires. Uh, but I'll kind of tell you what I end up doing uh, a little bit in, uh, yeah, in, in a little bit later. So, see you in a second. There, I fixed it! Yay! Alright, so, it's uh, it's a little bit more confusing now, I guess, maybe, for some people. Or maybe it's simpler. 
But before I had this line, uh, this line that runs in the back, uh, this is the one that goes to the water bottles, but you see this yellow line? This was basically when it goes on, this is going to be set to go on when there are no, there's nothing here. If there's nothing here, it's going to ask for water bottles. And it's going to ask for water bottles by sending a signal to the rear. So in this case, this one's going to send a yellow signal. This one's going to send a green signal, which you see that line right there. And this one will send a blue signal. So yellow, green, and blue. And the reason why, now you see the reason why I had to redo all the wires, because we already had those for other things. So essentially I had to like switch out. Uh, this one was the same as it was before when we made it. This one I had to switch out yellow for um, green, and so where green was, which was over here, and now it's yellow. And this one I had to switch out blue for yellow, so where blue was, which is right in the front, it's now yellow, and then so that way the back could be blue. So you can see it over here. There's the back, so there's the blue blue line that's here. They're all going into here and eventually there. Um, and ah, i got to change these pipes. Darn it, I'm going to lose some wires in the process. Not Not lose them, but you know. I have to get rid of wires in the process. So actually, these pipes right here, yeah, even this one. We're going to even do this one. Um, these are going to be diazuli pipes. And the reason why I'm doing this one as a diazuli pipe is for fun, but it's also uh, it's also purposeful because that means we can expand onto this later if we wish. All right, so cool, cool. Diazuli pipes, and if I remember how they work, it's right-click with a wrench to change direction of where it would sort them to. Uh, items to and uh, shift right click is change the color and I'm gonna make it easy and just the color of the signal is the color of the painting so uh, let's do this I'm gonna say shift right click until we get yellow until we get yellow yellow hey there you go P yellow uh, in this case it's gotta put back the wires it's a uh, green so this one will be nice nah, not that green Nice, bright, crazy green. Oh, that's that was what it was. Yeah, not that one. It's going to be that one. Yeah, bright, crazy green. And with this one, we need to add yellow and blue. And this one's going to be blue. Nice, bright blue. Uh, maybe that blue. That was actually a good blue. Ah, that was the blue again. Darn it. It's getting there. It's getting... Oh, that was the blue again. Oh, my goodness. If you hit the purple, you've gone too far. There it is. That's the blue. Okay. So, we're going to have this uh, is going to need an alt archic diamond or gate right here to control everything. And we're going to say if you get a yellow signal, green signal, and blue signal. So, yellow signal, you're going to do the yellow extraction preset and. Come on. Not single energy pulse, but energy pulse. We just want it to push out water bottles. Green, you're going to do the green extraction preset and do the same. So energy pulser. And blue, likewise, your blue extraction preset and energy pulser. Okay, so that's easy. So that'll push out water bottles, and now we have to set the presets. Um, the red extraction preset, I think if I don't define it, it'll just pull out whatever, I think. But we might as well define it, and we're just going to put water bottles in each one of these just, just for fun. Uh, but the red is going to be red. Uh, we don't have a red preset. That's right. Uh, in here. So green is going to be paint it. Oop, paint it lime green. I think that's the that's the right color green. This is going to be paint it yellow. And this is going to be paint it. Ooh, I think it's like a dark blue. It's that one. I think it's that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that one. All right, so that should work just fine. Um, and now let's get to actually programming this guy. So give me a second. Let me make sure I got everything ready, and I'll be right back. Okay, right back. Now, it's easiest to start, I think, with this gate right next to uh, and talking with these inventories of the brewing stand first, just because it's kind of the heart of the operations. First, let's set the first two to uh, act as the controllers of this iron gate. So um, the two directions we're going to want to push it are going to be where it's currently going, which is pointed toward the brewing stand. And that one is uh, this way, which is north. Otherwise, we're going to want it to be west, to go back to the, to the chest over there. So first we, firstly, we're going to say if, it, uh, if the inventory is full, 
Inventory is full. Have it pay facing to the west. And the west is that way. If there are uh, space for items... Sorry, well, let's see. Space space in inventory for water bottles. Point to north. Cool. So there it is. That's, that's, that's north. Great. So that's all that set up. Now it's time to set the logic of when things are in there, do certain other things. So when items are in the inventory and they lose items are water bottles, we're going to have it set to pull out nether wart, which is going to be over here on the left. This is this is the fire resistance brewer, by the way. And I'll do the same for the other two. I just won't show you the me doing it. So I have nether wart set out in the red one. Uh, for the one that needs a yellow signal, it's going to be magma cream. And then the one with the green signal is redstone. So it's going to be kind of red, yellow, green in that order. Um, so Okay, so if it has a water bottle in place, it's going to send out a red pipe signal. If the items in the inventory is an awkward potion, so once it brews this awkward potion, it's going to send out a, what is that, yellow, right? Yes, that was the last, that was the next one. Yellow signal. And if the items are in the inventory are the potion of fire resistance three minute, that means it's, it's sent out the magma cream, that's finished brewing, and now it's going to need to send redstone, that's going to be a green signal. Green pipe signal. And that's it. That's all we need to do. That's, that's all set. So now let's set these gates. So this min, this one would be, if you get a red pipe signal, a single energy pulse. Nice and easy. This one is, if you get a yellow pipe signal, a single energy pulse. And this one is quite simple as well. If you get a green signal, a single energy pulse. Sweet. And then finally... Um, the last bit is this gold and gate, and what we're going to say is if items are in inventory that are the fire resistance 8 minute potion, go ahead and do the energy pulser. And I'm going to do a final thing, and this is going to be, I was kind of debating on how I can shut off the system, and the easy way is going to be supply a red pipes uh, wire signal here. So the gold and gate will check to make sure that... In this case, a red pipe signal is on, and the items in the inventory are the potion of fire resistance eight minutes. Only then will it be able to pull out these items. If it doesn't pull out the items, the items will just sit in there, and the system will basically do nothing, which is kind of like an off state, right? Makes sense. Okay, so I'll just have to supply a red um, wire signal, and that'll be that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook these all up to go somewhere, and that somewhere is going to be probably under the ground and somewhere in a temporary chest in this storage room before I get the, the sorting aspect uh, worked out. So that'll that'll be that, or maybe I'll just you know put into a chest over on the wall or something like that for now. That's, uh, that's kind of phase one. Phase two is going to be the ingredients sorting and the potion sorting, and we can get into that in a little bit later. Probably not this episode. So this episode, I'm just going for getting this started. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to set that up, and then uh, I'll be back, and we can probably uh, test the system. All right, see you in a second. Okay, guys, we are ready. I hooked up the red pipe wire, actually, and the piping and everything, and this is the master switch. This is the one that runs and turns on and off everything. If we turn it on, you see the red pipe wires turn on, turn it off, the red pipe wires turn off. So we'll keep them on because we want to we wanna run this thing. Uh, this is where we're going to actually store potions for now, just until we get to sorting of sorts. And... Uh, why isn't it running? Well, the good question is that that's good because uh, there's one feature we haven't we haven't mentioned here, and that is if the inventory is empty. So inventory is empty, which is the current state. What we need to do is send a blue pipe wire. So uh, I'm gonna set the blue pipe wire first, otherwise it'll screw everything. And then um, when I left click here, it'll it'll begin. So it begins. All right, blue pipe wire being sent. We're now sending blue colored um, water bottles that are being sorted right here. Once it gets three, they all go back, and now the uh, line is not on anymore. It begins the brewing process because it actually already uh, spit out a nether wart, and we're brewing. We're automating this brewing like you've never seen before. Oh, yeah. Actually, you probably just saw it a few, uh, like, ten minutes ago or something uh, in the beginning of the episode. 
All right, so when these go into awkward potions, then it goes into the second phase, which is going to turn on, I believe it's the yellow signal now. Yep, there comes the magma cream. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's only one, which is great. Notice how only one came in here because we only had one because we have this emerald pipe system versus a Diazuli-based system, which, as we showed before in the beginning, it doesn't really work to give a single item, but boy, does it work great here. Um, that's great. All right, Magma Cream almost done. Now it's ready to send a green pipe signal because we have fire resistance three minute potion. And now we will turn this fire resistant three minute into an extended potion with redstone. And now let's start the brewing and continue. Our first automated potions are almost done. Come on, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is great. This works really well. Wow. I love when things work uh, exactly as they're intended. Come on, don't screw up with now. Don't fail me now. Oh, now it's all done. It's pulling them out. It's empty, and it begins the process all over again. Wait. It's empty. Why is it empty? That's weird. Okay, that's weird. Uh, I need to... This is growing pains. There we go. Uh, contains less than 25%. You know what? We need to specify it contains less than 25% water bottles, otherwise it will never fill up with water bottles. That's a good point. That is a really good point. Now ah, we got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that was that was the point. Whoops there. Um, <clears throat> okay. And the nice thing about this is that it will, it will kind of self-correct. So this actually shows a self-correcting version. Notice how we have empty things here. What if, say, for example, now we're only brewing two. Is that going to be an issue? No, because as this is, it's the space and in inventory for water bottles. That's the only thing that changes this uh, this iron gate. That's no big deal. Uh, and then it only checks if the inventory contains potions of fire resistance eight minutes. So it should still pull them all out. Um, I think so. So now it's going to brew the second batch. If we put a water bottle in there now, we're going to have an awkward potion and a mundane potion. Let's see if we uh, sort of troubleshoot this just in case things go not as planned. Okay, so that's how it should behave. Uh, why is there another ward? That's weird. Hmm. I'm going to ignore that another ward for now. I think it might be just an issue. That I, another ward I just dropped on the ground. Uh, all right, so this should work okay. Now it's redstone. This is a mundane if, a potion. Boring things happen with it because it's very mundane. I don't... I think they pull them out left to right, so let's see what happens. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull out this one or not since it's always all the way on the right. If it's pulled out first, that's good, but I have a feeling it's not. Okay, you pull out one, two... Oh, so close! All right, so it doesn't actually, it might get things stuck in here. Uh, that's okay. You know what, that's okay. The, if the worst thing happens that it gets stuck, no big deal. No effects. Okay, I think I just do that. All right, well, this is this is not bad at all. This is working quite well. We are automating this like crazy. All right, this is great. This is, this is working. We got like a, this is a third set of brewing going. All right, so if I shut this off, this is going to shut off the brewing system. What it means is that it will finish a cycle. So this will go ahead and brew fire resistance eight minute potions. And um, once that happens, though, it won't get pulled out. So that's that's the kind of the stall in the system, if you will. All right. So basically, what I'm going to end up doing now here is setting this up for sugar potions and this one for eventually health potions. But for now, it'll just be kind of a dormant thing. So let me go ahead and set that, and that we're then we're going to have uh, two potions. So see you in a second. Are you guys ready for it? Are you guys ready for speed? Speed potions, here we go. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, all right. Everybody ready for speed potions. They're like the other potions, except now we're painting the water bottles green. Bam, 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 and then they go back down there. Nice. All right, so now it's going to send... Yes, there it goes. Okay, so it's one piece of nether wart, and there it goes. Brewing commence. One single piece of nether wart. And now we're working. Alright guys, this is great. The end of a nice day here in Minecraft. We got a uh, potion system working. 
Right now I have to um, manually fill, fill these filtered buffers. And oh yes, I was going to try something where I kind of alternate between these two to make speed 2 and speed 8 minute, but um, it was going to be difficult getting items out. There's a way you can do it, and that is having two different ways of pulling items out. We could do that, but uh, not going to do it. Not right now, anyways. So that's, uh, that's that. But anyway, um, uh, that will pretty much do it now. I think we're starting to brew. Yeah, we're going to brew the speed potions. Here we go. Come on. So let's watch this automate. And while we do as the sun is setting and the monsters are coming out, it's time, unfortunately, to say goodbye. We have an automated uh, system going on here. And this is tons of fun. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed this little lesson in automation because this was fun for me. Hope it's fun for you, and I'll see you in the next episode where we do something perhaps a little different, perhaps a little bit related. All right, guys. See you later, and thanks for watching. Take care.